This true crime story involves a Swedish doctor who used the spooky mask to kidnap his victim and hold her in his bunker he had spent four years building. Truly terrifying. Come join me at the Murder She Show for this bizarre true crime story. Make sure you smash that subscribe button for someone shows up at your window wearing this mask. And I'm not saying it would be this sweet, innocent Southern girl that would do that. But I know people. Lots of people. So don't put that to the test. I kid, I kid. I mean, I'm not that evil, am I? Okay, so I'm weird. I didn't tell you before you started this channel. I'm a little weird. But if you're not weird, you're just kind of boring. So it's better to be a little weird than boring in my book. But that's my book, my weird little book. So, I don't know what your book has in it, but mine has some weird things. Done some weird things, seen some weird things. Just truly weird and maybe sometimes fascinating person. So, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can see this southern gal right here, right here, my she shed. Martin Trinneborg was a Swedish doctor, well liked by both patients and colleagues. Outwardly, Martin had in many ways the perfect life. Born on October 7, 1977, he was raised by a nomadic family and was quite small for his age. He graduated from high school with top marks because he was smart. He picked up things quickly and always met all the goals he set for himself. He then did military service as an elite soldier and became a mountain hunter. He had trained hard to reach that goal. At night, he got up to eat and worked out with weights nonstop. He became bigger and stronger before he became a mountain hunter. Of course, in my mind, it went to hunting animals in the mountains. I mean, I am an American, and I couldn't think of what else a mountain hunter could be. But apparently, in Sweden, it is a soldier that is trained to fight in the mountains. He learns how to rock climb and do all this physical stuff and a real go-getter, apparently. He then trained as a doctor at Karolinska Institute. In 2008, he got his medical license, and of course, he graduates at the top of his class. Who would expect less? I mean, he was Mr. Perfect, although he had one weakness, and that was a hot temper and just got irritated real easily and just seemed to yell all the time, but I mean, as a nurse, that's basically all doctors, or a lot of them. I want to say all, but I feel like as a nurse, or a former nurse, that's a long another story, that doctors are just like that, or a lot of them. I'm not going to class you all into one little sum, but a lot of y'all like to yell at nurses. By 2010, he had finally settled into his career, but just couldn't find the right woman. He just had that creepy feel to him that when women met him, they're just like, ugh, he's just a creep. He would often just stare too long. You know that extra long glare that just seems unnerving? I doubt if I have that glare, but, you know, didn't that unnerve you a little as I'm staring into the screen? By 2011, he started a project at his home, which kept him very busy. So at the time, he didn't have time for dates with women, so he didn't care. He would work as a doctor and then come home and work on his project. He didn't have a social life because he became obsessed with the work he was doing at his isolated home in Sweden. To go along with this project, he ordered from Hollywood two special masquerade masks made of rubber. After almost five years, his plan was almost complete. He just needed to find a special lady to share in his plan. He was now prepared to go hunting for just the, that perfect lady. Since he was a doctor, he was able to get his hands on an IV drip with some medication that would render his new woman unconscious until he could bring her home to his new secret bunker. His bunker had been designed to be able to hold a prisoner for a long time. The 600-square-foot bunker was fitted with metal security doors, the same thickness as a bank vault door, and electronic locks. The bunker was constructed of concrete blocks and sheet metal on a cast cement floor. The walls were a foot thick and were soundproof. 
The bunker also had an outside courtyard that was fenced in. He began his stalking and stalked like 10 different women before finding what he considered his perfect victim. This woman was an escort he had met at a club in Stockholm, Sweden. Martin, now 38 years old, met Isabel Erickson, who was 30 in September of 2015. After meeting at the club, he then called Isabel and told her that he was a stockbroker based in London. Martin claimed to be an American, though, and he said he only lived in London for a short time. He wanted her to join him as an escort date for a business dinner. Isabel was impressed and decided to invite him over to her flat on September 10, 2015, the night before the business dinner. Martin showed up to impress with flowers and champagne. The evening became intimate pretty quick as he ran his hand up her thigh. After they got busy, Isabel thought it was strange that during the whole act in bed, he was staring into her eyes. Not just staring, but a cold glare made her feel uncomfortable As she looked back at him, she thought to herself, These are the eyes of a psychopath. After the deed was done, he gave her tons of compliments, and it made her forget all about the uneasy feeling she had in bed. He left and asked her if she would still be up to attending the business dinner with him tomorrow night. She felt comfortable again, so she said, Okay. Mm, I don't think I would. If I felt like that while we were getting busy... And he just creeped me out like that. I think don't think I'd be seeing the dude again, but to each their own. She did. She decided to have another day. Why not? The next night, Martin shows up around 6 p.m. with expensive perfume and some chocolate-covered strawberries as gifts and also her fee for the night of $1,600. Right there, to me, is a red flag. You barely know the girl. And you're bringing... Expensive perfume, champagne, flowers, what was the other thing? Something else? I already forgot. But like, no, this is a little much. A little much for a second day. Okay, maybe down the road a bit, but this is a second day. And it's just creepy now. They just sit for a bit and sip some champagne. He begins to feed Isabel the strawberries he had brought. Not long after this, she begins to feel tired. He has suggested they lay in bed where she can rest her eyes for a bit. She did not know those strawberries were laced with sedatives, and the next time she woke up, she would be a prisoner. After she was knocked out, Martin began his plan. First, he went out to his car to grab the two masks, the IV drip, and a wheelchair. He first essayed his unconscious victim and then hooked her up to the IV drip filled with sedatives. As a doctor, he knew just the right amount to give to keep his victim sedated until he drove the 380 miles home. He then put the old lady mask over her head and put the other mask, a bearded man, on himself. He put her into the wheelchair, covered her body with a blanket, and attached the IV pole to the wheelchair. He rolled her out of her flat without anybody suspecting anything. He laid her in his car and drove to his home so he could complete his sinister plan. After arriving home, he placed Isabel in her new bed in his bunker. He stared down at her and smiled. He finally had a hostage for his bunker. He was proud of what he had built and the amount of fun he could have in the future. He reduces the drip of her IV, sits in the chair, and waits for Isabel to awake. She slowly wakes up, and she is confused. She looks over and sees Martin smiling and staring at her with his psycho eyes. She asks, where am I? He tells her she is in a secret bunker and that she would be held captive there for at least two years. She panics, jerks the IV out of her arm, and stands. Although Isabel is dizzy, she is able to reach two screws that are laying on a bookshelf and attempts to stab Martin. She is too weak and he just pushes her back onto the bed. After falling, she realized he had brought her dog, Nellie, to the bunker, too. She was at least relieved because her dog was with her. She had somebody, something, that she knew and was familiar with. Martin told her, if you attempt something like that again, I will chain you to the bed and give you nothing but crackers and water. And he informed her it did no good to scream because the walls were soundproof and over a foot thick. He said, my home is also located in the woods and very isolated. As he leaves, she heard the first door shut. 
Then she heard another shut, and then a third door shut, and she began to cry, while her dog Nellie jumped in her lap and began to whine. She was upset, Nellie, so she stopped crying and began to explore the place so she could maybe find a place to break free. She realized there were two more rooms, another room just like where he is keeping her, and a bathroom with a toilet and a shower that did not have the plumbing completed. When she decided to use the bathroom, she realized she no longer had her panties on. She wondered what he had done to her while she was unconscious. Everywhere she looked seemed to be too strong to break through, so she just sat down on the bed and felt defeated. Martin then entered again and gave Isabel a pen and paper and said, Write down your favorite food and books. He told her not to think about escaping because it is impossible. There are three doors holding you in that weigh 660 pounds apiece. Each door does and they each have different pin codes. And I am the only person that knows those codes, he said. The next morning, Martin enters with a leash, and she fears for her little dog's life. He said he was just going to take Nellie for a morning walk. He brought Nellie back in and gave Isabel and Nellie some food and informed her that he is a doctor and has to go to work now. He comes back from work with a small fridge and some groceries for Isabel and Nellie. Nellie seems excited about the possibility of eating, and Martin tells her dog Nellie, Yes, I will feed you so I can fatten you up for Christmas dinner. This terrified Isabel because Nellie was the only connection to the outside world that she still had. This is when Martin lets Isabel know that he is going to kidnap another girl. He is thinking about maybe a celebrity. He even mentioned some Swedish singers that he knew. Then he looks at Isabel and asks, Is your mom pretty? Maybe I should get her. Thought is so upsetting to Isabel that she feels sick to her stomach. Then he grabs Isabel's arms and puts handcuffs on her, instructed her to follow him while he covers the pin pads to the door when he pushes them so she can't see. After they get outside, it's dark and she hears no traffic or people. She can see shadows of tall trees and a fence. He lets her get some fresh air, brings her into his house, and tells her to take a shower. He walks her back to the bunker and tells her they will be sleeping in the same bed tonight. Although he maintains close physical contact all night, Martin does not essay her. The next morning, before he heads to work, he walks the dog, feeds her breakfast, and then takes blood and samples from Isabel's private area to analyze them in his lab at his work in order to find out if she has any STDs. He also forced Isabel to start birth control pills and informs her that after the tests come back, they will be having unprotected two to three times a day. When he comes back into the bunker after work, he forces her to sign a contract. On the contract, it says his captive will be held for 10 years unless she does certain things to shorten her sentence. One is to give him a girlfriend experience, GF experience. I guess that just meant to pretend like she was a normal girlfriend to him? I'm not sure. Another one said a list of degrading facts that she must do to shorten her sentence. Also, he added that she could get on a fitness program and lose and maintain her weight. She can gain time spent in the bunker if Isabel attempts to escape, refuses his advancements, or pleasures herself. Things that she has no choice about, he wants all of her body hair shaved off. He wants her to get a navel piercing. And when he lets her in the courtyard in the daytime, she must maintain a tan. She also must allow him to film and photograph her. The contract refers to Isabel as a guest. It refers to a possibility of other guests, as well as trans women or transvestites. The next day, when he comes in again, he has a He sits down on the bed, hands Isabel the weapon, and says, She's not capable of killing any human. Besides, even though she can see that the last door he came through is open, what if the others are closed and she's trapped down here forever? After she hands it back, he then says, it was a test. It really had no in it. What if she had pulled the trigger? Would he have killed her? He leaves and comes back later in the day with a box for Nellie to use the bathroom in and told Isabel he was tired of walking that dang dog. He says, I hope Nellie doesn't cause a problem. 
The way he says that, it made her fear for her puppy's life. Martin told Isabel, I will be going back to your apartment in two days to tidy up the place and to make sure I didn't leave any clues behind. Also to get some of your belongings. Is there anything special you need? He tells her he will be stalking a new potential victim before he comes home. And this victim will be staying in the other room. Then he will complete the Shire's plumbing. He also strikes fear in her heart when he says the new girl will only get half of the next room because the other half will be made into a torture dungeon. He then smiles in his creepy smile, stands up, and leaves the room. The next morning, she hears the doors opening and fears he may have a new victim. When the last door is open, it is a man, but it's not Martin. She pleads for help, thinking this new man might actually rescue her. The man had dark hair and a beard and just stands there without doing anything. The man then raises his hand to his face and pulls the mask off. It was Martin, wearing a mask that looked so real. She realized it must have been the mask he wore when he had kidnapped her. He just starts laughing and says, You should have seen your face. Isn't it realistic? He then tells her she will be going in the house for a shower. This time, he stays the whole time and watches her get undressed and take a shower. He then hands her some of his clothes when she is done and tells her that until I go to your flat, you can wear these. Of course, they're way too big for her, but at least they're clean. He sleeps with her again that night, only touching her and not going any further. The next morning, Martin gets up to leave and tells her he will be getting her things from her flat today. Isabel sleeps most of the day because... The night before, she hadn't slept with him in bed with her. He comes back, and when he comes in, she did not see any of her belongings. He says he went to her apartment, and there was a note, an envelope, on her front door. The note was from the police, letting Isabel know that her family missed her so much, and that the authorities had changed the locks on the door, and that she had to go to the police station to get the new keys for her door. Martin told her he would be driving her to the police station in Stockholm, and she was to tell the police that she met him and had such a good time that she had actually been staying over at his house all this time, and that the authorities needed to cancel the missing person alert, and then she needed to ask for the new keys to her apartment so they could get in it. After they arrived at the police station, she watched Martin put his gun in the trunk. After they went in, the police believed Something wasn't quite right when she asked for her keys back. Fortunately, they separated the two, and after she felt safe in the room without Martin, she let them know exactly what had happened, that she'd been held hostage inside of a bunker for six days. They immediately arrested Martin and went to his home to see the bunker. It was shocking to the Swedish police since they don't have very much crime in Sweden. In case you were worried about Nellie the Little Poodle, she survived and she was even able to take her to the police station with her. After police looked at the bunker, they were surprised that Isabel was ever able to even escape. The bunker had been built to hold several victims for years. The police found the contract that Isabel was made to sign on Martin's computer. Also on his computer, they found evidence of all the women he had stalked. Very violent, you know, images and suggestions of things he would like to do to his victims. Martin was ordered to stand trial for his crimes. His defense attorney said in the media that her client was a very unhappy person and that he was lonely. She said that he had no girlfriend and built the property to bring a woman who was able to be his girlfriend. Well, I want to know if his defense attorney would have liked that girlfriend to have been her. She's defending him. Maybe she should have been the girl in that hope. I'm sorry, that wasn't very nice, but I just felt... I just had an overwhelming moment of rage, and I'm sorry. I apologize. It happens sometimes. Martin was ultimately found guilty of the abduction, but was acquitted of aggravated SI because of lack of proof. The court had found that he had planned Isabel's abduction and had subjected her to serious risk by sedating her and keeping her locked up. Martin was sentenced to 10 years in prison. That's it. Sure, he'll get released before then. Who knows? It could be already released. Although I didn't see that he had been, but he could be. Isabel Erickson. This is not a real name. She changed her name to Isabel in order to protect her identity. She is in hiding and dreads the day Martin is released. She's actually wrote a book 
I found one that I could have bought. It's not on the Kindle. And I found one book that she wrote I could have sent from the UK, I believe. And then there was another book that was in Swedish. And, of course, I can't read that one. But the one was in English. But I just didn't want to order it because it's going to take some time. And I wanted to get this case out. And the reason I had to get this case out, I was going to tell you guys. I'm going to be gone for, what is that, two weeks or more? I'm not sure. I'm going to be in Colorado. I'm going to be up in the mountains like I was before, hiking and having a good time. Last time, last year when I went, I actually took my computer and I did a couple of stories up there. And if I can find enough internet and have enough time, I may do some more stories while I'm up there. And y'all can have the mountains as the back view. I don't know. It just depends if it works out or not. But anyway, I might do it. But I just wanted to give y'all up. Maybe why well, y'all don't see me for a bit or see me less. And that's the reason because I'll be in Colorado. And they're wanting to go eat because they're pigs. I know what Max wants. Max always wants to eat. I have a feeling Simon's going to growl. He's kind of rude sometimes. Now, don't be rude. He gets loving too. All right. Love y'all. Bye. But I do know lots of people. Lots of people. I kid, I kid. But don't put that to the test. Ha 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 ha. So, you gotta put up with the weirdness to hear my true crime. It's just the way it goes. He became bigger and stronger. 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 But he had one weakness. It was his hot temper. Oh, Simon. Get out of here and quit that. Attitude. Be decorations. You're too fat to get there. No, no. You can out up there too. Now lay down and be nice. You can't be back out there. You're mean to the people that's working on my house. Or maybe that's just how I feel as a nurse. I kind of feel like doctors are like that. Really? You need to lay down. You know that extra long glare that just seems unnerving? I doubt if I have that glare, but, you know. Didn't that unnerve you a little as I'm staring into the screen? Maybe it did. Maybe I don't have the unnerving glare, but. Okay, what other YouTuber is going to sit and glare into the camera for you? And even give you the whole feel, the whole vibe, the whole experience? Maybe Mr. Baldwin. Maybe. Nah, he's not as crazy as me. I don't think he's quite up to that level of craziness. Anyway, let's move on. Yes, I will feed you so I can fatten you up for Christmas dinner. I don't know if one of my dogs growled or farted, but it wasn't me, I swear. I probably would have deleted it had it been me off the video. But it was me. I didn't growl or fart. I didn't do neither. So anyway. Oh, God, thanks. I'm, Simon, I'm trying to tell something here. Can I tell this real quick? Shh, lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Oh, God, you're moving my whole desk. Tell him bye. Y'all's nails are so loud. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Tell him bye. Say I love y'all. You gonna say bye too?